Hey, what's up, guys? I am so happy to be joined with my friend Alex Sylvester, owner of Edge by Alex Sylvester. How are you today, Alex? Good, man. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we've known each other for years and years, all the way back in school. So I think it's awesome that we're now on a business podcast and a business interview, um, you know, what, 10, 12 years later. So if you yeah. could just tell the audience real quick what your business is and what you offer. All right. So I own a full functioning salon in Birmingham. Michigan. I am a platform artist with Paul Mitchell. I'm, a, I'm an international platform artist with them right now. Um, I'm also a uh, Faces of Sola with Sola Salons as well. So I own a small studio in Birmingham and I specialize in barbering techniques as long, along with uh, balayage, advanced color techniques, um, advanced uh, color correction. Uh, there's a lot going on with it, but pretty much uh, full functioning for every realm of hair that's going on right now. I've been doing hair now for about eight years and the business for a little over two. Well, that's awesome. What's something that kind of, you know, sticks out? So if somebody's watching, they're just starting this video, what sticks out and what makes you special and how are you, uh, you know, changing people's and helping them? Well, I, the biggest approach is just the high level of education that I put myself through. I'm constantly learning. Even though I am a high level educator myself, I still need to continue understanding the education, understanding the hair, understanding what's going on. There is a lot out there um, when it comes to competition for hair, but there's not a lot of people that are actually taking the opportunity to understand the knowledge that's out there. Like, it doesn't matter what career you're going to be into. It's all based on how much continuing education you come through. Just because you get a certificate, a degree, or anything like that, you have to continue that um, balance of education, and you have to keep on top of everything that's coming through. Because there's always going to be somebody that comes up with something new, somebody that to be able to challenge you to be better. It's uh, my personal flow with everything that I do in hair. It's never to achieve to be the best person in it, but always be on top of uh, being a better person than I am yesterday. So continuing with the education, continuing with your knowledge of everything that you're shaping through. So it's very, it's very important, you know, just kind of uh, keeping humbled back down to, to, uh, you know, understand like your flaws, learn from your mistakes and just kind of grow from there. That fits right in with this, you know, this podcast, looking for trusted business owners, uh, people that, you know, when they're doing searches and looking for someone to hire, they need to find someone they can trust, not just go to, you know, someone random. So the education plays a huge role in that. And I think that's awesome that that's your main focus. And then, uh, you know, you're going to get hired from that. That's really cool. So my next, at least my next question, why you got started in this business, you know, what was your passion eight, you said eight years ago, and what got you here? Well, um, honestly, it was all by mistake uh, was the craziest part about it. So uh, with us being back in high school, it's, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, li I, we kind of just lived for that day when we were uh, living out where we grew up. And my biggest thing was, you know, I wanted to be an artist. I've always been an artist throughout high school. You probably remember that. And being the more creative one. But I had no idea what I was going to do to express that freedom. And so I kind of let that like fade away a little bit. So I ended up going into radio broadcasting, um, all the way into like nursing while well, I was going through college and I just, I couldn't flow with it too well. It just wasn't really anything that I wanted to do. And, uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, like Kurt Brewer's mom, Lori Brewer, she was the one who like, you need to go into cosmetology. And I was like, why? I don't understand. She's like, you're obsessed with hair and you don't even know it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like a regular guy hairdresser. I don't know if that's a normal thing. And she's just like, shut up. It's completely normal. So she's like, just go to a small name school and get your, like, um, finish out, graduate and start doing hair and see if you like it. If you don't like it, then go back to college. If you do like it, then it could be a career. And so I ended up just stumbling into it, signed up for a little small, uh, cosmetology school right in Grand Blank and moved up from there and it's just like I just craved more knowledge all the way from the beginning and I was really drawn to the Paul Mitchell family even in the beginning of school just because of like how they stood out and the biggest concept that I felt like was awesome with the company was the fact that they're big on everything that they take out in the world they want to put back into the world which is huge it's like that full circle like reflection and their main focus is of course in a business is to make an overall profit but that's not number one they really put their money into their workers to promote their brand, to develop their brand out. And it's great to see that there's a company that stands for the people that work for them, not just getting an overall profit. And I feel like that just makes them more profitable. So lots of respect for that.
Well, that's a great, great story. We all have our own unique stories on why we got into, you know, doing what we love in our business. So, you know, you fell right into it. You had no idea, but yeah, I remember you used to always have the coolest, craziest hair. So somehow it all worked out in the end. Yeah. I just got creative with it. And I, um, yeah, I it just think it really followed through, which really paved the way for me to take on like many obstacles and challenges with hair. Like a lot of, a lot of things that people were afraid to do because they were afraid of the outcome. And for me, I was just like, if, if we made it this way, we can always change it back. It can always be something altered or changed. You know, it's like, you don't have to look at one style or one specific brand of what you want to be the stop all end all for everything. It's hair, you know, it, it can always be shaped, reformed, whatever. So being more creative is able to, you're able to do a little bit more with it. Well, that kind of leads me, leads me to the next question is, is it more that you focus more on men, women, um, different styles? If somebody's watching in their, in the Birmingham area right now, you know, kind of speak to them on what you could do for them. Well, honestly, I am a 50-50 base salon. I've got just as much male as I have female um, uh, clientele that come into me. Um, I have a pretty vast knowledge on what to do. So I do specialize in coloring, but I also specialize in, you know, short women's haircuts, long women's haircuts, uh, along with uh, all barbering techniques. Because the school that we went to were primarily, like that I went to was primarily barbers. So they taught me a lot of uh, different barbering techniques um, moving on with, uh, you know, different fading techniques, different styles like that, uh, which obviously today is becoming more of a trend where men are getting back to the flow of actually being confident enough to take care of themselves and spend a little bit more than a $5 haircut at some generic brands. Um, and because they want to be presentable, you know, they want to like come through. It's not so scary for a guy to come into a full functioning salon other than just like, other like a Grandins or anything like that, not to name any specific names out there no definitely but, not <laughs> yeah yeah so it's uh it's it's great because like i have a, such a well-rounded clientele i mean my age range is anywhere from like eight months to 88 like i try not to set too many limitations on myself whether it be male female color no color cuts like, long short it's like so it, i've got a pretty vast knowledge of virtually i don't want to say everything but most yeah Okay, that's awesome. And if anyone's watching, you know, Alex is someone we trust, highly recommend, check him out, especially if you're in the Birmingham area. I think that's would be a great fit. And it's always good to get to know somebody before going and hiring them or going to the studio. So that's perfect. So if you could, uh, I want to touch on two things. One thing, first thing is starting your business. It's been about eight years now. What's one thing that's really worked for you? Something that sticks out in your mind that has worked being able to start the business and the journey to where you're at now? Um, the biggest, the biggest like push to like start a business is pretty much just taking that first step to move forward. But like in my mind and my biggest, um, catch of what made me drive into being a business was the challenges. Like, what are you going to do next to come first and not being complacent with that challenge? Cause the reality is it's extremely hard to be a business owner. It's not a simple and easy thing to do, but that shouldn't scare you away from trying it out. But so I always like the challenge. It doesn't matter like what it is. If I feel too complacent in my own business, I'm like, all right, let's uh, let's get up and let's do something else. Like let's figure out what else we could do to kind of just interact it, make it different, or just stand out a little bit more. And for me to own a salon in the Birmingham area, it's a it's a very wealthy area, um, and it's predominantly like one of the more wealthier areas in Michigan. So for me to come into um, a studio and set up like I have, I'm I stand out a lot. Like a lot of people before I went into Birmingham told me that I was not going to be successful because I'm outside of the norm. And my response to it was awesome. So I should be okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, you gotta, you gotta challenge yourself for it. And having, a, like, having those obstacles, I feel like is the one thing that makes your brand stand out. And it's pushed a lot of my success. Just been one year after another, I've had one milestone that I've reached beat. And then I set up new goals and reached that and just continuing with the goals, never be complacent with what I'm doing. That, that should be motivating, especially for anyone watching that's wanting to start their business too. you know, find different challenges and get through them. Don't be scared by them. You'll come out stronger at the end too. Right. Second, then the last question about with that is something that maybe you did wrong that somebody can learn from or something that sticks out that you made a mistake on or that you were doing wrong for a while that now you're, you've learned and been able to correct it. Um, probably the biggest obstacle like going around like the biggest challenges that you run into um in mine was simply not taking the challenges that were put in front of me or not taking the opportunities that i had 
to move forward because I was scared, you know, just being like being fearful. It's like I've been doing hair for eight years and only in a business for only two. It was scary thought and having many opportunities. And I've had a lot of opportunities throughout the years to better myself or do something better. But I was scared and I didn't. And I do regret that because, you know, if I were to do this seven years ago, I can only imagine where I would be because I'm I feel so successful now. And I know there's bring through with it. Um, if I were to do this seven years ago, I would be on top and it would be phenomenal, but I can't look back and dwell on the opportunities that I've missed. It's just a matter of creating more opportunities out of what I have now. Um, I, I don't know. It's like, especially in this day and age with having so many social media presences and so much easy, like so much easy access to everybody's everyday lives. And you see so many people that are just so overly successful and their lives are just so perfect in, in many people's eyes. Um, my biggest thing that I always look at between like, if you don't kind of between the lines is like their life is not perfect and everybody had a sacrifice or a struggle to come up to it. So with sacrifice comes a new story of challenges and obstacles that you have to better your own business. It's just, it's the, the simple fact of life. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's going to be perfect. I feel like perfection is a very like huge word that not a lot of people should use, but you can always strive to be better to get that level of perfection, but never yeah. settle. Perfect. Yeah. And I, you know, a lot of that show too, when you look at it and they don't show the bad stuff that's going on or all the challenges, right? They're just showing right. when they come out on top. So that's just human nature. We want to only see good and we ignore the bad. But my biggest thing is I embrace that. Like I embrace the hard times and I've gone, I've gone through a lot, like an absolute ton. I mean, I could sit here for hours and tell you all the things that I've been through to have challenges come up today to where I just wanted to give up and I just wanted to stop. But it was the drive of what pushed me forward to come through and to provide for my family and to provide for everybody else in my surroundings. And I just, I have to. And it's like having that drive to come through to provide for everybody else that I care for just led into a monstrous amount of success, which has been great. And it's only good. It's only going to go up. It's like I get success. I'm proud of it. I'm happy about it. But I just look at it to where is what's the next step? What's the next challenge? Like, what can I do to do better? That's awesome. And that's, you know, really motivational too for people watching, uh, you know, get through the challenges, especially if somebody's going through them right now and uh, hearing someone like you that's gone through it, you've made it to the other side and you just keep going up, you know, definitely uh, inspirational right there. All right, Alex, working out, you have a tank top on now. I know you've been working out. You post all either hair or workouts on uh, Instagram all the time. So yeah, you're, you're on your feet all day, right? For your business. So uh, tell me real quick the benefit of working out and then being on your feet with the business. Well, it's um, one of the biggest challenges that I noticed from a lot of veteran hairstylists. They all said that their bodies are just like broken down. Like everybody has like, you know, carpal tunnel, um, plantar fasciitis, uh, different problems with hearing, with seeing through like all, all these little obstacles of what they had to go through in 20, 30 years of do, in their career and how their bodies started breaking down after 10 years into it. So I'm getting close to that 10 year mark and I am not going to allow myself to have my body break down. So training is essential. It's just as important as my business because if I don't, you know, well tune my own body for me being able to stand for 12 to 15 hours a day, then what's the point? Because I don't want my body to break down in my career and um, fitness is something I was never really into, especially like, you know, it's only been something I've been into for the last like two or three years. And I've grown a mass amount of body mass, like, like from that. And I'm doing that all from a very strict vegan diet as well. So, and, and I've been a vegan for seven years now. So it's just like one obstacle after another. Um, uh, one, one thing that a lot of my friends say, because of all like the fitness stuff that I do and then the hairdressing and everything, they always tell me like with your diet and everything that you do, you just want people to try to hate you. And I'm like, that's part of the challenge. Like, that's part of the, like it's, it's not about, it's not about what I'm doing for other people. It's about how I am doing good for myself and reflecting that self value to everybody else. Because if you don't focus and work on yourself, uh, like a little bit, I'm not saying all the focus should be on yourself. Like how can you have a positive outreach to people? And with being in hair, it's such an intimate type of career where I am just face to face 
very involved in like with people's personal lives, but also just like the physical contact that I have to have with people. I'm a big believer that if I'm in a bad mood or if I've got bad things happen to me, it reflects on the person. And if I'm not taking care of myself, like as in working out, having a good diet, making sure that I'm going to live, you know, pretty much health free up until I'm at least like 60, you know, or even further, you know, it's, it's just more of a positive outreach because everything that you put into yourself, you're going to reflect that out onto people. And with having such an intimate career, like you, it's very important, but training it absolutely insane for me to, you know, a critical for me to keep up and be able to do this career for 50, 60 years down the line. And Definitely. I, like, uh, I see the, uh, is it a vegan tattoo on your hand? Yeah. Yeah. You got, got a, bro there. you know, so I went, that's uh, awesome. Uh, dedication right there for it that, that's cool well yeah thanks for sharing that i think it's you know beneficial for anyone for any business you know you got to take care of yourself so you can you know perform right and keep up all right anybody watching right now if you're in the birmingham michigan area you're visiting um maybe even 30 miles away you you'd be willing to drive to see alex we definitely recommend him his business uh he's a trusted business owner make sure to reach out to him and Alex, tell us real quick where we can reach out to you um, if we're interested or if we just want to follow your journey. Yeah, there's, uh, there's several different things. You can reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram uh, tag is Alex underscore Sylvester underscore. Um, also, you can find me on Facebook as um, my business name, obviously, is Edge. Edge by Alex Sylvester. It's on Facebook. Um, my uh, personal phone number, um, well, personal cell phone for the salon is 248-439-6969. Feel free to text, um, a little bit easier to text and get phone calls. Um, but all my information is all up throughout the website. You, do, you pretty much type my name in and there's a lot of different things that pop up. You can just Google it out. Yeah, we'll make sure to post all those links, uh, either above or below the video, depending on what platform you're watching on. But uh, I appreciate you taking the time today. And anyone watching, reach out to Alex, especially if you're in his area. And uh, keep up the good work and keep growing that business. Awesome, dude. Same thing to you, man.